Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity and this morning I decided to go off on a tangent so I'm not doing Panelisa today I'm making something from my personal haul that I got the other day and I'm going back to Panelisa tomorrow and an announcement for Panelisa which um, basically happens on Monday so you know just digressing, just doing my own thing today. Right, so I have decided to do one of those um, file fold hangers, file hangers, whatever it is you want to call them. And it's that one that I received. Now, you can use these in many configurations. You can use it as the purpose it's meant for. You can use it just to decorate the side of a file and hang all your dangly bits and what have you. You can use it to make a mini book. You can cut those sections off and you can add them to a card. So you've got like a gatefold card with sort of like fruit uh, pieces closing or lapping over each other. You can cut little elements out and use those. There's all kinds of things that you can do with something like this. But I'm going to make a mini file folder. Now, what I've uh, already done, because I'm trying to be organised, yes I am, is I've already done one, but I need to go and do another one, and we're going to do that together. Now, I've already coloured this one in, and I've used my my gorgeous, I don't know if you can see it, metallic watercolour paints. So that's how I've done that. And then it will fold in half around a file. Now, I've cut a sheet of cardstock that I've printed off Snap Click Supply and I cut it down to 8 by 6. So what you end up with is a 6 by 4 once you've folded it in half. I've used my corner rounder just on those two edges there and I've rounded off the edges of my little file folder. Now this one will go to the end like that. We will put all this together in a second. Uh, obviously you position it so your lemons aren't hanging off the end and you end up with your bits that you can put your book rings through or whatever you want to do. So if I turn it that way around you can kind of see that. Right, on to the next bit, Snap Click Supply again and the Jodie Lee Sweetheart um, ephemera pieces and I have cut one piece down and I intend to put that in the centre so you know you can do whatever it is that you want to do I'm going to move that down so that you can see it better and then I've got this one which still got its white border because I'm going to use my tile fab uh, tile file file yes file tab punch and uh, cut those out with that right yeah and I've got a sheet of watercolor cardstock here from Walmart I love this stuff I'm always telling you to get it get it while the price is good because it really is fabulous for crafting and I'm going to vanish I'm now going to die cut my next lot out of that watercolour cardstock. I've got my scruffy mat in position. What else have I got? Oh yeah, <laughs> not forgetting our gorgeous sparkly watercolours and my lovely beloved tatty old watercolour brush from AliExpress. Right, I'm going to die cut and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have been and I have die cut and that's what it looks like but we are only using half so I'm going to decide which half that I want to use and I think I'm going to go for this one no I'm not I'm going to go for this one so I'll go for this one and all I'm going to do is just cut it off because we are going to trim even more off when we go to do that edge I won't waste that that will be used for something else when I do another one Right, so we've got our base here and the colours that I used before, um, they don't actually have colours on them. But if you get this palette from AliExpress, they're always glued in the same way around. So I'm using this bright gold and I'm just dripping some water in there just to prime it. And then I'm using this one as my green. Oh, hang on, let me check that with my other one. Yeah, that's, that's the green that I'm using. And 
I think I need a bit of bronze. I'll go through this darker gold up here. Just drop some water on there. It's always nice to do that to kind of like just get ready for what you're doing and uh, it'll prime your watercolour. Now, also, I didn't show you this piece comes out when you die cut and it's just a lovely shape. Great shape for putting a sentiment or a word or just stamping an image on. You'll punch a little hole in that and make a tag. So I didn't waste that either. Right, now then, into my yellow. And when you're watercolouring, you're supposed to wet your cardstock. I'm not actually doing that. I'm just going in. And if I want to add some more colour into this afterwards, then that's exactly what I'll do. And uh, it will be already primed. So the next shade that I put down would be a lot darker. So that is basically my lemons. Just really quick. Yeah, like that. Now, my brush. I should have got some kitchen paper. Hang on one second. Right, got that. So, you know, it's not going to come out perfect because it is a sparkly paint. But just brush off as much as you can. And then adding it to your bit of green isn't really going to hurt. We're just going to stir that up and go in and do the leaves. And as you can see, I'm not being perfect because I'm going to add a darker shade into this afterwards. And we are trimming these off. So you don't really have to do this big bit up here. I'm just doing it just to catch the ends of those stems. So as you go along, obviously with your brush, if you've never watercoloured before, the more you brush it out, the paler it gets. So it's a lot paler here than it is here. But you can alter that by picking up those drips and just putting them down. So you're never really using a lot of paint and watercolours will last you an awful long time. Unless, of course, you paint every day and uh, then not so much. But while I'm doing the green, um, the yellow is drying off, which is nice. So I'm going to go along there just in case. Because I haven't really decided how far down I'm going to cut yet. Right, so I've got my green on there. And then I'm just going to squeeze it again, get as much of that out as possible. And then I'm going to go back into my yellow and the area... I've just put a little bit more water in there, but you'll find that the colour will come up even darker now. I'm just going to go into the area where I think that there's likely to be more shade, and that's where the dots are. So I'm just putting more colour to the dotted area. Just really simple. I'm just going to make that one quite solid because it's tiny. And then once again, just squeeze your water brush. Just get a little bit off. But it doesn't matter if you get a little bit of colour blended with something darker. Because it just makes it more interesting. And then I'm just going to darken up some areas on those leaves. Nothing too fussy. Just touch up that little bit. Go right down to the edge of that lemon. You just got a little bit, you know, different tonal values going on. There we go. That's all right. I mean, that one looks almost white when I look on the camera, and I don't think it is. But I'll touch it up anyway. So we've got our lemons, and we've got our leaves and our stems. And I'm just going to squeeze that out a little bit more, because I've got yellow and gold on there, as you can see. And I squeezed into this one before. So I'm just going to revitalise it just for a minute. And I want to add that as my branches. So just going along there. And I will add just a little touch more water in a minute. And um, it will make all that bleed together. 
Sorry if I'm quiet. <laughs> Just go along there. I think I'll make those bits a bit more golden. And then there as well. And then I think I'm going to sort of like rinse my brush. Now I'm always saying when you use watercolours, um, regardless of the environment that you're in, mine is very humid. Always make sure you leave your lid open until the paints are dry. Um, I sometimes leave mine for, oh, I don't know, 48 hours or so. But now that I've got those colours down there, I just want to squeeze my brush onto this cardstock because I'm not going to use it all. And I'm just going to push colour along there and into the green because I don't know, as I said, how much of this I'm going to be cutting off or not. Right, that needs to dry. So I'm going to depart just for a little while. Maybe I'll put a little touch of green there. Just for a bit of interest. So I'm going to let that dry and I will be right back. Right, so while that continues to just dry off a little bit more there, I'm going to put down my little piece of ephemera <clears throat> that I printed and cut off and I'm just using Dollar Tree glue you can see I'm avoiding the edge that's because when I squeeze it down it'll get to the edges or there's about and I'm just going to wave a little bit up the center there well, I do want this dead center and you can create your little file folders, treat them like ATCs and uh, just create whatever little work of art that you want to. Now I'm eyeballing it for the center and sliding it up just a fraction. It's a fraction just off those edges and then I'm just going to press it down. So I've broken that woody space up, but I do like the woods because I just think it goes really well with um, shades of lemon. I mean, you could add a little postcard or something that had been cut up. Maybe you've got a postcard of Italy. Yes, Italy. What a wonderful place. <laughs> I will tell you, my hubby and I, we went to Naples a few years ago. Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be able to stop laughing now. We stayed at a hotel that was, I think it was 1,500 years old. And it was a beautiful historic place. Yes, it was. Smack bang in the centre of Naples. And <laughs> we went to get into bed uh, on the first night. And we noticed it was the equivalent of like a queen size bed. But it was too small mattresses that were put onto the frame and we didn't know that and we got in and we both ended up rolling right into the center and for our whole holiday we referred to it as the bay of naples <laughs> because every morning when we woke up we'd either have an arm or a leg stuck in the gap yeah those were the days <laughs> It was wonderful. Oh, really, it was. And I have to tell you, the grapes in Naples, I think they're probably the best in the world. They have to be. They are huge and uh, really, really sweet. And you can almost taste um, the volcano ash in them. Uh, really, really lovely. But anyway, I ended up in the Bay of Naples. And we did go to the Bay of Naples too. Right. So there's my bit of paper there. Here's the one that I made earlier, and I did splash this one with some of the gunmetal colour that is in that paint palette. Now, I don't know whether I want this one on there or whether I want that one on there. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking this one, yeah. <laughs> so I'll stop making you seasick for a while. So to get this onto here, I need to glue it and... I'm just going to open this out. Now, obviously, you're going to need a lot of glue where you're going to the edge because you don't want that to come off on you. 
and then with elements like this you can just dot your glue you just want them to be you know sort of like positions where you're not going to catch them when you're playing around with your file folders um, and they're just you know they're not going to crease up so just a little bit onto each of those elements but I'll put most glue here and I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this side so that we've got that fastened down and watercolour paper is watercolour this is water-based glue which means it's highly absorbent now I only need to go glue on one side of those but get some glue down on your chunky elements if you've missed anything and there's anything sticking up in the air then you can always go back and touch touch it up with your needle tip bottles and I'm always saying I think this is one of the greatest things in the craft room the needle tip glue bottle because you can just get into everywhere right so I've got glue all over that and now we're going to position this whoops I'm going to get this and I need to be able to get it in the middle now I'm going to have to stand up so if I start shouting you have to forgive me now I want it relatively central but at the same time you know we just do not want any bits of lemon or leaf sticking out of the edges so do you see that that means I need to come down just a little bit whoops and that's where it starts to get messy bring it up to the edge that's it that's right on the edge I'm okay with that and you can give it a good screws and you can weight it down as well and what that has done is I'll sit down so I'm not shouting is now giving your file a lot more substance feels a lot more solid and then when you start adding inner pages and things like that inside of your file it's little bits of ephemera and photographs and stuff um, it becomes lovely and bulky now that is the reverse so you've got a really pretty reverse too so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this mat off I'm going to let this dry because I need to keep pressing it down in places and I'll come right back right now then that's glued down you can see there's a couple of little pieces you know but I can just go under there with my little bottle but looking at this you'll see that all of the lemons are connected now I can just go along there with my scissors and get rid of this big bit and then think about where exactly I'm going to position it. I'm going quite low down, but not onto the border so that I can see where I want to put that. And I did actually think um, off camera, if using, see, you need to be able to wiggle those bits around and get them to fit in doesn't matter if you've got pieces that overlap that looks quite nice but then at the same time you know you want to position it right I actually like the idea of going in at an angle but this is what I was looking at off camera I've got this um, doily die this um, cascading doily that I got a couple of weeks ago and I was wondering what that might look like on the edge uh, with some lemons and then I thought because then you'd be cutting that bit off and then I thought no maybe that's a bit too much and I can save that for one of the inner pages so anyway I am going to position this in a way that I like it and I think it's going to be overlapping and a little bit skew if these little um, bits here they don't bother me Oh, I've got that and then I've got a lemon overhanging so I think I'm just going to go for that so I'm grabbing my glue bottle spin everything over I'm going to dot glue and then anything that I miss I can go back afterwards and just touch it 
you just gently lift up whatever with your fingernail and just get the point of the glue bottle um, underneath. And I was just checking my camera there, making sure that I'm recording. Because <laughs> I think I'm going to be having one of those days. Yeah. Right. That's enough glue for the moment. Oh, I do need to do those little twiggy bits. Yeah, I think I've got all the twiggy bits. Right. Let's see what happens now. Pick that up. And then put that there. And then have it coming back there. So you've got something that's that's quite detailed really. But I'm just gonna hold this down and let it try. So we've got that done and um, I really love it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I will pick it up in a second, but I've got my punch and I'm just going to unlock it. And if you remember, I cut another piece of this ephemera, which is the Jodie Lee Sweetheart Pack from Snap Click Supply. Now, I'm just going to get that in there and... Uh, I'll flip it over actually because there's certain elements you might want to cut out and other bits that you might not want to so I'm going for that bit there and I might go for this bit here as well and decide because it's got a nice little swirly twirly piece on it and I quite like that let's get that straight right so I can decide now between two <laughs> Punches are great. Never, ever sell your punches. That's all I'm going to say. Do I want the swirly bit or do I want the plain bit? Well, I can save the swirly one for something else. Or, no, let's go with the swirly. All you've got to do with these is just quite literally fold them in two. Make sure you've got them even before you squeeze down. Super easy to do. Decide where you want your tab, just run it under there. It might be that you want it in the middle or maybe you want it at the top if it's going to be um, the first file in your box. And I will say one of the things I do like about this file tab is that it matches, can you see that, my corner rounder. So it will quite literally go up there and become as one with the corner rounder. So that is something I like about them. But for now, I think I'm going to go here and I'm going to go up to that line and just have it in the middle. I don't know if that is the middle because I'm eyeballing it. But I'm going to get my glue. And you only need your glue really in here because if you leave that bit empty, you've always got the opportunity to... Um, thread ribbons or a little charm or anything off there uh, just you know insert your ribbon or what have you using a needle and then you need to get it right on the edge she says carefully you can pull back and you can see that and then just fold it Give that a squeeze. And I could put a stamp or anything onto there and stamp something, stamp a number. And those other ones that I showed you yesterday, the really long ones, you can do exactly the same kind of thing. I will try and come up next week and uh, do these because. I've got some gorgeous souvenir papers by Bo Bunny from Stack Click Supply and these would look really nice with them but as I showed you yesterday these are huge these are full size manila folder size so you know you can either do big things like that or you can just crop them down and make them this size and make smaller file folders so there we have it that is what I've got for you today I hope that you enjoyed that. I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. I enjoyed that. 
but now you've got that you can go inside you can decorate it all up you can put all your pretty papers in there and um, I've even got a slice of uh, well a scrap of lemon paper here but you know you kind of get the idea about decorating the insides and using whatever papers it is that you want to use or even creating little pockets which is why I always save all of my scraps because you know that's going to make a nice little pocket down at the bottom inside there when I've used some other papers too. Right, once again, awesome digression today. And I thank you so much for watching. I'll be up with Panelisa tomorrow. And as usual, all links below. Bye.